Thank you for tuning in and welcome to Erin Painting. Today I will be doing an in-depth review of the least popular kill zone environment for Kill Team. And of course I am talking about Death World Forest. So ugly, alien and um, Aldrich flavored. Uh, this has received a lot of heat. Um, on various forums and well the internet as so. well. Um, but let's take a look at it and maybe I can change your mind or at least you can make an informed decision whether you want this terrain or not. So first of all the terrain and yes it comes in bags mostly. There are two sprues here and the rest is chopped up and put into zipper bags. And well, this just screams China plastic. But to be fair, all the kill zones, all the terrain of Games Workshop is produced, manufactured in China. This is the monitorum set. So it isn't really bad quality. It's the same as we're used to. Um, and I think one of the reasons for chopping it up is it wouldn't fit into one box if it was on spruce. There is a lot of terrain here and I'm pretty sure there's enough to actually cover the whole board. Um, because this is a dense terrain with not a lot of open ground. So it's quite different from what we have seen so far. I have started removing mold lines um, on some of the sets here and well it's awful it's really really awful time consuming there's not a lot of sprue connectors but the mold lines are just well they are there and um, it needs a lot of work before you can actually paint this up so in the set you will find one of each of the three sets of uh, Death World Forest terrain. So there are the Eldritch Ruins, there are Barbed Vernum Gauss, and there are the Gravelweed and the Shardrack Spines. I'm not sure what set the Gravelweed comes in, but it's there. And of course there's also a Death World Forest introduction with a lot of fluff in here. What is Death World Forests? Uh, some colored pictures and of course like with the other kill zones there are stories of battles where Death World Forest uh, took a part. So here you see the terrain. I'm not quite sure this is so less flash this way. So um, here it is painted up as you see it on the boxes. So this is very colorful and well um, the yellow, the blue, the red, um, it's, it's all over the place. There are a lot of colors here and the battle mat itself is kind of dark. So um, gets kind of confusing to actually uh, to, to look at and one thing I like about this is that uh, the terrain doesn't stick out. It looks like it's part of uh, the battle mat. It won't do well on camera. For uh, YouTubers like us who do battle reports this will be quite confusing uh, to actually record battles on. But you can of course paint it up with a different color scheme and I think that is actually done on the back of, yes here you can see it, um, here it is done in colors that actually match the, the battle mat. So less confusing to look at but still the, the terrain does blend in with the battle mat so um, it doesn't stick out. 
So that too, it's a two-sided battlement like with the other environments. Um, so there is this and I actually kind of like it. It looks like Liberty fabrics with a lot of flowers and yes there are some uh, barrels in there. So I'm guessing this has been an imperial planet which doesn't really correspond to the Eldritch Ruins. I'm not quite sure about that. And of course the other side um, which is half in Sector Imperialis and half Deathworld Forest and I really like this um, but as I will show you in a second there are some missed opportunities here. So here it is and I have lined it up with the battle map that comes in the starter set, the Sector Imperialis and as you can see it does not line up and it doesn't matter if you turn it around. And here with the back side of the Sector Imperialis, the one that comes in the starter set and still no lining up. So beneath this we have Sector Mechanicus. No, it does not line up and Turning it around doesn't help. So, and under this, we have the one that comes with Sector Monitorum and still no lining up. So this is definitely a missed opportunity. I have no idea who took this um, decision, who made this decision, but, well, what a blunder. So, of course people want to line them up. This is just, well, I have no words for this. Now let's have a look at the tactics that comes with this environment. There are four uh, terrain specific tactics. Two for the Eldrick Ruins, one for the Spines and one for the Vernum Gores. And these first three are kind of special. The wording is, well, similar. And they all cost zero command points. So, use this tactic at the beginning of the movement phase until the end of the phase, Shadwreck Spines uh, and open ground within one inch of Shadwreck Spines are dangerous terrain. This tactic costs no command points and does not trigger any abilities that allow you to gain command points. And of course, this is the same just with the Eldritch Bruins and the Barbed Venom Gores. So this is definitely something new. Um, there are also three uh, other tactics that are not specialism specific. The anti-plant grenade is kind of interesting. It's two command points. Use this tactic in the shooting phase when you shoot uh, choose a model from your kill team to shoot. Instead of using any of that model's weapons, choose a piece of terrain no bigger than 10 inch in any dimension within 6 inch of that model and roll a d6. On a roll of 4 plus, remove that piece of terrain from the battlefield. Any models that were standing on that terrain are placed on the battlefield directly below where they were standing. So I'm quite sure you can't stand on any of this uh, terrain. So this is if you decide to, to bring in some other terrain, well, it can poof, uh, disappear, apparently. And also a thought. I'm quite sure this uh, terrain is not designed to be combined with a multi-level terrain because that's more than a slight advantage. If you stand on multi-level terrain, you are above the ground, you are above all the the possibility of dangerous terrain. So um, I'm quite sure this is designed to be, uh, well, only uh, one level fighting combat. Oh well, on to the next two, they are both zero command points. Use this tactic at the beginning of the fight phase. Until the end of the phase, the penalty 
to hit rolls for intervening terrain is minus two rather than minus one. And over here, use this tactic at the beginning of the movement phase. Until the end of the phase, open ground is considered to be difficult terrain. Yes, more difficult terrain. This is, uh, well, this is gonna be an interesting fight. So, here are some love for the veteran. So, use this tactic when a veteran specialist from your kill team suffers a mortal wound that was caused by a dangerous terrain test. Roll a d6 and a 2 plus, ignore that mortal wound. Alright, and here is something from for the combat specialist. Level 1 combat tactic. Use this tactic when you choose a combat specialist from your kill team to fight in the fight phase. Reroll failed wound balls for this model's attack until the end of the phase for two command points. And Grizzly End, I kind of like um, the names they have given, well, everything in this environment. It's kind of humorous. But um, level 2 combat tactic. Use this tactic when you choose a combat specialist of level 2 or higher from your kill team to fight in the fight phase. If they are within one inch of an enemy model that is within one inch of any terrain features. Until the end of the phase, any wound balls of 6 plus for the specialist attacks that target that model inflicts a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. So that's very specific, right? Very situational. Then there are two for the scout. Level 1 scout tactic. Use this tactic at the start of your turn in the movement phase. Pick a scout specialist from your kill team who is not shaken. Models from your kill team do not have to take dangerous terrain tests if they begin their phase within 3 inch of that model and end their movement within 3 inch of that model. Again, this is kind of situational, right? Alright, level 2 scout tactic. Use this tactic at the end of a final battle round. Of the final battle round. If a scout specialist at level 2 or higher from your kill team is on the battlefield and not out of action, you can spend one or more command points on this tactic. Roll a d6 for each point spent. If you roll one or more rolls of 6, wow, gain one material so this is this is for uh, for campaign only interesting all right so that was the tactics now on to the environment table so you roll a d6 in the beginning of the game and on a one it's too quiet no additional boo on a two aggressive fauna at the beginning of each battle round, roll a d6 on a 4 plus randomly select one model from the battlefield. That model suffers a mortal wound. Again, with all the model mortal wounds. So, on a 3, crawling undergrowth. Whenever a model advances, you must roll an additional dice and use the lowest roll. When determining a model's charge distance, you must roll an additional die and use the two lowest rolls. So, that all has to do with movement and limiting your movement. Alright, on a four, terrifying sounds. You must add one to all nerf tests. Ooh, I can really see this being uh, quite, of n quite narrative rules, right? I really like number five. This was a mistake. All terrain, including open ground, other than impassable terrain, is dangerous terrain. Oh boy, that's that's gonna be a game changer. And of course, six, uh, not entirely lethal. In a campaign game, the player who wins the mission gains one territory. Otherwise, there is no additional rules. All right, let's have a look at the missions. Starting off with the narrative. Um, Mission Rescue. Alright, so kill teams are chosen as usual. The battlefield. This mission is played in a kill zone death world forest. Well, we kind of knew that. Create the battlefield and set up terrain. An example of how you might do this is shown on the reverse of this card. 
Okay, let's take a look. So this is the deployment zones and there's an attacker and a defender. All right. Oh, let's see. Um, the players roll off and then they take a turn starting with the winner and set up an objective marker until there are six objective markers on the battlefield. Each objective marker must be at least five, uh, four inches from other objective markers and six inches from the edge of the board. The players then roll off again and the winner chooses which of the short edges of the battlefield their deployment zone is touching. All right. Do not use the rules for the scouting phase. And tracking vital signs. At the beginning of each bell round, the player rolls off and then take it in turn to move an objective marker that has not already been moved and is not currently controlled by either player up to three inches, starting with the winner of the roll off. This move cannot bring the objective marker within 2 inch of a model from either kill team. Continue moving objective markers until all eligible objective markers have been moved. Identifying vital signs. When you control an objective marker at the end of the movement phase, you identify it. Pick a friendly model within 2 inch of that objective marker and roll a d6. On a roll of 1, the, that model suffers a mortal wound. Then remove the objective marker. On a roll of 2 to 5, remove the objective marker. On a roll of 6, you have identified the VIP, the one you have to rescue. Remove all other objective markers from the battlefield. If there is only one objective marker on the battlefield, it is automatically identified as the VIP. Once the VIP has been identified, the tracking vital signs rule no longer applies. All right, and it is rel relative battle length as we know it and victory conditions at the end of the battle. If the attacker controls the VIP objective marker, the attacker wins. Otherwise, the defender wins. All right. And you can choose to play this instead of the faint mission. On to the next narrative play mission, Daring Ambush. So choosing kill teams setting up the battlefield scouting phase and deployment is all as we know it there's something crawling on me once deployment ends the attacker rolls a d6 for each of their models on the battlefield and a roll of one that model suffers a mortal wound and battle length the battle ends at the end of the battle round if the defenders models are all either shaken out of action or have escaped see below Otherwise, it is relative battle length as we know it. Victory conditions. If at the end of the battle more of the defender's models escape than did not escape, the defender wins. Otherwise, the attacker wins. Escape. The defender can move their models off the edge of the battlefield labeled escape route. In the movement phase, if the models move is sufficient to take them wholly over the edge of the battlefield. A model that escapes this way is not considered to be out of action but takes no further part in the mission. So this you can choose to play instead of the regular ambush mission. So here are the attackers deployment zone and the escape route and here is the defenders deployment zone. Oh and there are of course attacker tactic and defender tactic. Same goes for the mission we had before. I forgot to read those. Use this tactic at the beginning of your turn in the movement phase. Choose an objective marker that is not controlled and move it up to three inches. This move must take it closer to a model from your kill team but cannot bring it uh, within two inch of a model <clears throat> from either kill team. You cannot use this tactic once the VIP has been identified. And a uh, defender tactic, use this tactic at the end of the battle round if there are fewer than six objective markers on the battlefield. Place an objective marker on the battlefield anywhere more than three inches from models from either kill team. You cannot use this tactic once the VIP has been identified. That is interesting. Okay, and for this mission, Pitfall attacker tactic. 
Use this tactic in the movement phase when your opponent uses a model to move and that model advances, or when your opponent chooses a model to fall back. Roll a d6 and a 4+, plus, that model suffers a mortal wound before they move. If they are not taken out of action, they can then move normally. And desperate struggle, the defender tactic. Use this tactic in the fight phase. When you choose a model from your kill team to fight, you can re-roll failed hit rolls for that model until the end of the phase. And they are both two command points. All right. On to the first match play mission, Fearless Foraging. If you're playing a campaign, you can choose to play this mission instead of the Disrupt Supply Lines or Take Prisoners missions. So, kill teams are chosen as usual. The battlefield is, well, nothing exciting there. Scouting phase is also as usual. And deployment, there are... Oh, by the way, there are five objective markers like this. So, forage. At the end of each battle round, each player rolls a d6 for each objective marker they control and consults the following table. 1. Bidden. Randomly determine a model from your kill team within 2 inch of the objective marker. They suffer a mortal wound. 2. Keep looking. No effect. 3. Useful find. Gain 1 command point. 4 to 5. It's edible. Gain 1 victory point. 6. Hidden cash. Gain 3 victory points. And it's relative battle length as we know it and victory conditions are the player with the most victory points is the winner. If players are tied for the most victory points, those players draw. Yes. All right, this this sounds interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to, to play this. A lot of randomness. And the last mission, also a match play mission, make your escape. And if you're playing a campaign, you can choose to play this mission instead of the assassinate or sweep and clear missions. So choosing of kill teams as usual, battlefield, as usual. Scouting phase? No scouting phase. Deployment? And this is interesting. All right. The players take it in turn to deploy one model from their kill team in the order of least to greatest advantage. Models must be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than three inches from enemy models and more than six inches from the battlefield edge. Once all players have set up one model, they do so again in the same order and so on. If a player wants out of models to set up, skip them. If a player wants out of room to set up their models, they stop setting up models. Any remaining models from their kill team do not take any part on, in the mission. That's definitely new. So, deadly jungle, all terrain other than impassable terrain is dangerous terrain. And this includes open ground. Battle round. La battle length. The battle ends at the end of a battle round if all of the models of at least one player's kill team have escaped. See below. Or are out of action. Victory conditions. At the end of the mission, each player scores one victory point for each of their models that escaped and loses one victory point for each of their models that is still on the battlefield or is out of action. So I don't know if this can take you... Can, can you get minus points? Well, we have to decide on that. The player with the most victory points is the winner. If players are tied, blah blah blah. So escape. At the beginning of the first battle round, each player randomly determines an edge of the battlefield. Players can move their models off the edge of the battlefield that they determined in this way in the movement phase, if their model's movement uh, move is sufficient to take them wholly over the edge of the battlefield, we know this. A model that escapes this way is not considered to be out of action, but takes no further part in the mission. All right. So this is, uh, well, this is not an escape from the attacker. This is an escape from um, from the terrain itself. That's interesting. I really like that. So, to sum up, 
I am not a big fan of um, the mold lines, uh, but I do like the terrain. I like that it is, well, there's enough terrain to actually get that feeling of a jungle. Um, that's a lot of terrain in this box. Um, I know a lot of people find the terrain too alien and, well, but ugly. Um, but I think I kind of like it. Um, at least perhaps with another color scheme as, um, as shown on the back of the box instead of uh, what we usually see this painted up as. Um, I think this is a very different uh, kill zone environment. Um, I'm pretty sure it has it. It's not designed to to work with uh, line of sight blocking terrain or uh, level terrain. It is it is ground level combat, and uh, you, if you add other terrain stuff to this um, setup, I think that will add an unfair advantage because it will uh, take your minis above uh, the dangerous terrain. Um, the missions and the tactics, I think they work very well with the terrain. Um, you have to, this is missions that will, uh, that will force the players to actually move around, uh, to try to escape um, the terrain, to uh, well, the one way you can move around um, the objective to uh, well change it up all the time. Um, the one where you have to escape, uh, where you are all scattered uh, around the the battlefield uh, and don't have uh, a regular deployment zone as we know it. Um, it's very different and I can definitely see some uh, some interesting narratives uh, being forged here. So what I don't like, um, well again the modal lines I don't like them and uh, even though I like that the terrain um, doesn't look added to the the battlefield uh, they look like they are part of the battlefield but as a youtuber uh, who will have to um, <laughs> um, to record battle reports on this terrain I think it can be quite difficult uh, to decipher which what is what really um, but we will have to work around that because I'm definitely looking forward to actually play this. Um, also, the tactics very different. Uh, zero command points for most most of them, and um, that's something new. I think I think you have uh, it. Oh, um, it shakes up the tactics. It shakes up uh, strategies. You can't just play this kill zone as you are used to. You have to to rethink a lot of your usual strategies, and I really like that. Um, so I am fortunate enough to uh, to have Aaron a volunteer to well volunteer to <laughs> to paint this up. Um, I just have to remove the mold lines and even the, though that is definitely the dull part of terrain painting um, he is a faster painter than me so hopefully you will see some battle reports soon I hope this video answered all of your questions um, this is the least favorite of uh, all the environments um, at least if you ask most players. Um, a lot of people have issues with, uh, at least with the aesthetics. Um, but if you are, if you have any questions not answered, well I have the terrain, I have the bugs, so please feel free to post questions below and I will do my very best to answer them. Um, 
otherwise if you like it please like it and if you want more of this or well more kill team content we have a lot up on the channel already and we will make more so please remember to subscribe all right that's it for now have a nice day bye bye